And he said to them, the harvest is abundant, but the laborers are few. So ask the master of the harvest to send out laborers for his harvest. We're part of that 72. And it only appears, that gospel only appears in Luke about the extra 72. Earth, earth must never blot out heaven. Earth must never blot out heaven. And like the 70, you and I are sent by the Lord to preach the gospel to those around us. Yet a better way to reach the God, teach the gospel is to act it out in the way you live your life. The preacher is not to be cluttered up with material things. We are to travel light, not loaded down with everyday things. It is so easy to get entangled in the things of this life so caught up in the things of this life. And once the great preacher Johnson said, after seeing a stunning sight of great wealth and success, he remarked rather grimly, these are the things which make it difficult to die. Earth must never, never, never blot out heaven, never. You must not be in the work of the Lord for what we can get out of it. It's in the giving that the, that the rewards are overflowing, that our hearts are filled with joy, peace, and love. That's where the love and the peace come, in the giving of ourselves to one another, in loving each other, flowing over with love and peace and joy. And the 70 returned with joy. They said, Lord, they said, at your name, the demons are subject to us, but do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. Lord, I hope my name is written in heaven. Remember, God made you for himself, not to prove your glory, but to be his glory. Okay, not for your own glory do you sit here this morning, but you sit for his glory. Let me share a story with you that I read the other day. And you know, I like telling stories. Jim Corley tells of a con conversation he had with a friend named Alex who attended his church and was struggling over what he considered to be his many failures to live the life that Christ wanted him to live. One day they met at the car, car dealership where Alex worked and Corey writes the following. That day Alex got straight to the point. He said, Jim, I feel like a hypocrite every time I go to church because I fail to live for Christ so often in my life, my everyday life. So Jim said, tell me, Alex, what do you call this part of the dealership? Nodding to the area outside his cubicle. You mean the showroom? I smiled, yes, and what's behind the showroom past the parts counter? He says, the service department. And Alex said, with all confidence, okay, what if I told you I didn't want to bring my car to the service department because it was running rough? That would be crazy, he said. That's the whole point of the service department, to fix cars that are not running right. You're absolutely right, he replied. Now, let's go back to your initial conversation Instead of thinking of this church as a showroom where image is something so important, rather think of it as God's service department, helping people like you and I get back in good running order with God and his people. After all, that's what we're all about, isn't it? And then there's just a 
another brief story that I shared too about evangelization, about reaching out to you all know, you all sit here and know there's people here that, that you would like to have here with you that for some reason or another do not come anymore. And, I, and this, is, this, this little short brief story that I tell you is about evangelizing those people in love, inviting them back to be here in love only, not in scolding, not in saying, oh, you're a sinner, you better get back here. No, but evangelizing them. When Jeff Van Gundy was the coach of the New York Knicks basketball team and was attending Yale University, he said he learned a lesson the hard way. Living in a dorm across the quad from Van Gundy in New Haven was the actress Jodie Foster, also a Yale freshman. I didn't know that. The 12 students of Van Gundy's floor had put up $100 each, and the total would go to the one who got a legitimate date with her. Okay? Well, it never happened to me either for that. I had seen her around, Van Gundy said, but was too shy and afraid to engage her in conversation and then ask her out. Are we too afraid to engage in conversation and invite those back to this church to feel the total freedom that God gives to us? One evening on his way back to the dorm, he was walking by a store that made popcorn. And a voice behind him said, geez, that popcorn smells really good. Young Van Gundy turned around and it was Jodie Foster. Yeah, it does, and that was it. Van Gundy said finally one guy got the guts to ask her out and she went with him. And shaking his head in sorrow after all these years, the other guy got the date and the $1,200. But Van Gundy vowed that he would never be that flustered or that unprepared again. Evangelization. Don't be unprepared. Don't be flustered. Many opportunities come suddenly, including telling others the good news of the gospel and the joy that comes with being a part of this community, this community of St. Monica. But just be prepared. <laughs>